All right, so next up we're going to be working on section 2.3, which is about linear equations. So we'll start up talking about what is a first order linear differential equation, the type of thing we're solving. And we'll do a little derivation that demonstrates how this method works. And then talk specifically about the steps you use to solve this type of problem. And then see a whole bunch of examples that help us out. Um, and one interesting thing that's going to come out of those examples is we're going to connect one of them back to the idea of equilibrium values. So you kind of saw that a little bit when we did that Newton's law of cooling problem last section um, in section 2.2. We're going to try to make that even more concrete now. And then the last thing we'll go over is incorporating piecewise functions into this whole framework that we'll be talking about. And um, that topic is really difficult for some people, so just watch out and kind of um, really be careful about the example we do there. But before we launch into all that, the first thing we're going to do is just talk about um, what are linear equations. So remember, in almost every section of this class, we're learning a new tool for solving differential equations but they always apply to a particular type of differential equation. And so the type of ODE we are learning to solve today is first order, so that means only one derivative, dy, dx, linear equations. And so that means you don't have um, interactions between y and dy dx or um, squares and square roots and all that stuff. And so the way that you could write this is just having a1 of x times dy dx plus a2 of x times y equal to f of, um, actually I'm going to do g of x so that it matches the notation in your book, um, g of x. where a1, a2, and g are functions of our independent variable x. And y is the thing that we want to know the solution to. We're curious about how y of x behaves in this differential equation. And then we can rearrange this into the standard form where you have dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to f of x. And so this is going to be the form that we talk about when we're solving this type of equation. The first form that I wrote down is sort of the general way to represent a first order linear equation. But in order to use the method we're talking about, you're always going to want to rearrange it so it looks like this second equation right here. And then just to be clear, all that happened between those two lines is you divided by a1. So where sort of p is just whatever you had for a2 over a1, and f is just whatever you had for g over a1. And so this form is the one we use when solving these linear ODEs. And we'll get a chance to solve lots of differential equations later, but real quick, we're going to sort of talk about how um, solutions to this type of equation work. Um, and so we're just going to start about um, thinking of p of x as a function. So for example, p equal to oops, x squared. Then you could compute e to the integral of p of x dx which for that example we just talked about, the integral of x squared is one-third x cubed. 
So just e to the power of n. Um, that's not a function that you love, but it's a function that you know. Um, I zoomed in kind of weird there. Hope that doesn't break everything. Um, and then remembering that y is equal to some function of x. We could also compute oops, the derivative given by d dx, so the derivative with respect to x, of e to the integral p of x dx times y. It's kind of intimidating, but just hold on and hopefully it'll kind of start to make sense. So you've got e to some stuff times y, and you want to take a derivative. So if y is a function of x and e to some stuff also depends on x, your first thought is, okay, product rule. So you would say, I keep e the same, and I multiply it by the derivative of y, and then I keep y the same and multiply it by the derivative of that e. like that. And then this d dx e to the integral p of x dx still looks kind of intimidating, but let's think through that one too. So it's the derivative of e to the power of an integral. Whenever you take the derivative of an exponent, um, you use your chain rule. So you say, okay, first I'll look at the derivative of the thing up top but the derivative of an integral is just whatever's inside the integral. So there you go, p, and then you hold on to the exponent the way it was. Times y. Um, and then one last thing I'm gonna do to make this a little easier to look at is I'm gonna say, okay, I have this common term, e to the integral p of x dx right here. I'll pull it out of everything, and then I'm just looking at dy dx plus p of x times y. And thinking ahead, we'll note that this looks kind of like our differential equation right over here, dy dx plus p of x times y, just not um, with that f of x that we're used to seeing. But um, this video is going to... Um, be a little bit too long soon. So before we launch into that connection right there, I just want to make sure that all this derivative stuff that just happened is clear. So I'm going to work through um, an example real quick. So let's say we did d dx of r e to the integral p of x dx from these examples right here. So e to the one third x cubed times y. So I would say, okay, I keep my e to the one-third x cubed the same, and I look at the derivative of y. Now, I don't know what y is, so I do have to just represent it by that dy dx. And then I take the derivative of e to the one-third x cubed um, and multiply it by y. So let's see, if I'm looking at the derivative of e to the one-third x cubed right there times y. Okay, and then when I take that derivative, I just, you know, go through my regular computations. I say, what's the derivative of one-third x cubed? Well, that's just x squared. Oops. And then I hold on to my exponent. And then I still have to remember that y. So sort of if you were given this problem, hopefully you could compute that derivative. And I'm just going to kind of underline with different colors every part that we've talked about here. So I said in um, this form right up above, let's see, here's my um, e to the integral p of x dx. So there's my e to the integral p of x dx. And um, there it is again. And way back when we first introduced it, um, up above, it was e to the one-third x cubed. And I see it, oops, right there. 
just like I had it right here. And then my um, P of X for this problem was that X squared. And so I said it should be right here attached to Y. And that's where it is. Comes out of that um, derivative of E to the 1 3rd X cubed. And then the stuff that we can't really deal with because it's um, related to Y is, let's do I guess a single dashed line right there, dy, dx, and y, just like that. Um, yeah, and hopefully that helps you to kind of see the connection between the um, equation we're working with and an actual function that you're familiar with. In the next video, we'll go ahead and start working with how this connects to our differential equation overall.